Thank you all for coming. And thank Sarah and Don for getting this rolling. <laughs> okay, so, so Sarah really started bringing this up at the 250th um, planning meetings um, about how wonderful our stone walls are and wouldn't it be great to get everybody to be clearing them off so we can see them. Um, this is an excellent example, this photograph here of a section of stone wall on Cave Hill that is barely visible now and not at all visible in the summertime. You would not know that there was a stone wall there. Um, so, so Sarah and I started talking about putting this, this Zoom together and um, I have this thing about stone walls. So what we're gonna talk about is um, about stone walls in Leverett and encouraging people to clear them theirs and the kinds of stone walls we have in Leverett and the mapping of them. So um, in Leverett, we have lots of stone walls, different kinds of stone walls. This particular stone wall is on my land. It is a single um, freestanding wall. And this one is particularly, um, um, this, this one makes me very happy because the maple tree that's in the middle of that stone wall was a maple tree that was a boundary marker for Elijah um, Clary in a deed in 1790. And so that tree, the stone wall was put up after the tree. The tree was the, the marker, um, one of them along the base of, of the hill here. And so this is, I, this is a tree that I found through deed work it, that, that I can talk to the same tree that, that Elijah talked to <laughs> way back when. <laughs> and yes, I talk to trees and I talk to rocks too. <laughs> so this is a closer view of a single um, standing wall. And uh, you can see that you can look right through it. That's snow on the other side in between there. And um, they were generally, broader on the bottom, which makes some level of sense if you've ever tried to build a stone wall. Um, and then they were sort of just piled up and stacked along the way. Um, the double wall is, is more substantial. I'm not going to get into the different uses of different kinds of walls at this point, maybe another, another time. Um, but so these are made basically with two, two rows on either side and sometimes filling them in. Um, kind of like just and and like you that. can see here that you cannot see light through there. Um, it's, it's because there's another layer of rock on the other side. And now these guys, these are just amazing walls. Um, they, they consider them disposal walls. So essentially you have a wall on this side, a wall on this side, and then stones dumped in the middle. This is when you have a big pasture that you're clearing. And as you know, rocks grow during the winter um, and, and you have to keep clearing them. <laughs> um, this wall starts out as a single wall and then toward the other end starts getting wider and wider. Hmm. Um, this is an interesting wall. It's built along a, a ledge outcropping. And it actually goes for a long way up, up on the top here. And so using the natural um, landscape as the base of it. For those of you who, who knew my mom, this was my mom. And this is a very tall stone wall. Um, she is no taller, was no taller than me. Well, actually two inches, but basically five feet. And the wall is much taller than her. Um, it's a great wall. 
Um, this is an example of a stone bridge that was part of a wall. So the water goes in between here. My puppy is getting water out of it. And mm -hmm. this is, this. you wouldn't even know it was there, um, except that there's water on one, there's a brook on one side and then there's the brook on the other side. But it is um, probably 12 feet from one side to another. Um, and it is... Oh. Old Cave Hill was one of our, our oldest roads and it's still there. And to my, in my lifetime, it hasn't been fortified in any way. Um, there is a stone bridge um, on at the, the southeastern, southwestern end of Rattlesnake Gutter near me that um, has been covered over, but the, the stone bridge is still there. Um, They've added an extra, after the flood um, of 96 or whenever it was, um, they added an extra um, culvert in there, but the original stone is still there. Hmm. Had to include the town pound, um, which uh, I didn't get to clearing it this year, but um, it definitely is in need of a lift. Um, it was only last year that I went and I cleared all of these um, small trees and pulled the vines off, but it needs to be done again. And you come and join. For those of you who don't know where this is, it is across right. from the school. And hopefully, we will get us. This used to have a nice town pound sign, um, and Jack, Jack. get one back again. Yay. And then, you know, I decided that I'd include photographs of some of our newer walls built by, by um, townspeople on the left and the right, because for our next um, celebration, um, this will not be a new wall anymore. Um, and I don't know historically of any walls in Leverett that were made the way this one was. Um, but the, the library wall is a fairly standard high-end wall um, where it's flat on top. And you see those in places where um, there, was, there were people who had a lot of resources to put into it. Um, so I also went through and looked at, at threats to stone walls. The good news is that most of this information, um, most of these photographs are not from Leverett, um, but it is, it is a concern um, where people are taking stones away. And in this case, this is in, was in Connecticut and people were, have basically gone and taken stones. Um, I have not heard of that happening in Leverett. Has anybody? Anybody heard of stone walls being stolen in Leverett? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is certainly a concern in some places. Um, what is more likely in Leverett um, it are places where changes are made that end up destroying parts of stone walls. Um, this wall on the left here, um, is actually from my property, I'm sorry to say. Um, you can't see it too much, but um, the contractor that I had um, dig the cellar hole for my addition, in spite of my instructions not to, to put the dirt on top of the wall, it ended up getting on top of the wall. Um, behind here, you can see it's a nice uh, single stone wall. Here, you can barely see the stones and this is all dirt. Um, another case is, this is the Rattlesnake Gutter Trust Elamus property, um, which was given to the trust. And it was, it used to be part of a larger piece of property and there was no entrance. Um, the original entrance was to the property from the property on the north and the property boundary 
went right to um, the end of the stone wall in the neighbor's driveway. So the trust decided to make an entrance so that the fields could continue to be mowed. Um, so what, what the folks that, let me just say that there is a stone wall um, initiative center at Yukon and um, there's a man, Robert Thorsten, who's written lots and done a lot of workshops. Um, and a lot of these, um, this information is from his site. And um, what he comments on is how if you plan ahead, you don't necessarily need to make a lot of breaks in a stone wall. Um, but, um, but that is one of the ways that our stone walls are getting um, destroyed or altered. Um, strip mining of walls is not, again, not something that I've seen in Leverett um, or anywhere around here really, but it is happening. I have gone to stores where, where you look at this nice pile of uh, rocks for sale. I know Amherst Farmer Supply has them. I don't know where they get them from, um, but basically people selling their stone walls to someone else. Um, and in Leverett, um, we actually have sort of a, a stone wall bylaw. Um, the state um, chapter 40, section 15C establishes a scenic road protection and Leverett has passed this. Um, so we have protection on scenic roads. However, it is not, um, it's not what we might think it is. Um, essentially, if, if someone wants, if the town um, or the county, I believe, um, wants to straighten a windy, twisty road and there's a stone wall um, that lines that, a historic stone wall that lines that, um, then there needs to be a hearing. Um, Route 63 is exempted because it's a state highway. Um, and this doesn't impact landholders um, on their property if they want to take down a stone wall or for that matter, if they want to rebuild a historic stone wall. Um, we have nothing in Leverett that speaks to that. Um, and um, we do have, uh, if you're going to create a driveway that goes through a stone wall, you have to talk to the town roads guy. Um, but again, these are things that, um, that are, are all part of, um, that don't have significant impact. Um, in terms of protecting stone walls. And I think that um, the idea of um, further stone wall protection um, would have, might have a rough time, um, understandably, because people want to uh, have control over their own lands. But, but that's what we have now. Um, this, is, this is a photograph that I, took from this Yukon um, site. Um, basically this line of green here is a stone wall that has been covered um, over the years so, so as to be unrecognizable. And I have seen these before. I, I did mapping on um, power lines and gas lines and we would come across stone walls that were not at all visible. Um, and this is an example of that. And there, I'm sure there are stone walls that are hidden in Leverett. Um, can't tell you exactly where they are, but um, this would not be surprising. So overgrowth is one of the other ways and, and links into the picture that we just saw. Um, 
And our stars of the, the show today are Don and Sarah Robinson. This is the stone wall that is in front of their house. If you can even see the stone wall because of all the ferns, it's right there. And here's Don clearing away of the stone wall. How long did it take you to do that, Don? Would you say about a half hour or something? Oh, you're on mute, so you, you're not answering. You're still muted. Ah, oh, there you go. How long did it take you, Don? Yeah, about a half hour. Right. Not bad, not bad at all. And so here is the before picture and here is the after picture, which looks mighty nice. And Sarah, this is Sarah's, Sarah documenting and, and taking photographs. Uh, yeah, you can that's right, that's shadow. for shadow right there. That's right. So, um, the the 250th celebration is coming up in 2024 and there is more or less an ad hoc steering committee that has has formed itself and um so this is where the conversation about sprucing up our stone walls came from and with the hope that um that we can get our roads looking nicer um, and also to engage people in research about where they live. And the stone walls can tell us a lot. Um, I, um, I, one, of, one of the number of areas, too many areas that I've been researching is um, Adam Freeman, who was a freed slave uh, who for the Porter family in Hadley and um, Joseph Hubbard um, married one of the Porter women and moved to Leverett and he gave Adam Freeman um, seven acres with the, the um, provision that he never moved from Leverett um, and he bought an additional 12 acres. And so one of the things in the deed talks about uh, a fence bar, which would be an opening in a fence, and also talks about um, um, another section of, of a square farm area. And so this is one of those cases where the stone wall could be the square farm area and it can aid in helping figure out exactly where Adam's land was. And um, if you picture um, where Amherst Road, Mon no, Amherst Road, Depot Road, and Long Hill come together. It used to be a four corners. And Adam, the, the hill that goes down over um, Depot out to Route 63 at one time was known as Adams Hill. So it's in that general area. So anyway, it's just a case where the stone walls can assist in, in looking into our past and figuring out where people were. So you can do some stone wall mapping in Google Earth. Um, this, is, this is my property here on the gutter and, and the yellow arrow and hopefully my cursor is following a stone wall that's visible on Google Earth. What you can't see is the stone wall that goes this way and the stone wall that goes this way and so there are places, um, there's an, a landscape that I worked on in Rhode Island where the, the images are so good that you can see the stone walls. That's not so much the case in Leverett, but had to point it out. What I have been using is LIDAR. 
Um, and for those of you who don't know what LIDAR means, I've written it on the bottom and maybe you will know afterwards and maybe you won't. Um, but essentially what LIDAR does is take out all the houses, all the water and leaves you with what the earth looks like. And the, down here is my pasture and my field that we we're just looking at on Google Earth. This is the cellar hole that is on Rattlesnake Gutter's um, Whitney property that was originally, the house was originally built in the late 1700s by a guy named Luther Clark. And then um, Apollos Whitney and his family lived there for a long time. And so with this, this is mapping that is in uh, GIS graphical information systems. And um, so essentially with this, I can go in and draw the boundaries of, of stone walls. So LIDAR in our area is fairly fuzzy still. There are other places where um, it's as clear as a bell. And we know that the government has much clearer than this, but but we don't have access to it. Um, but this wall in the LIDAR represents this wall on Google Earth. And so LIDAR makes mapping of stone walls really, I wouldn't say easy, because it's not always right, um, but it is definitely a powerful tool. Um, and so, this is one of the tools that I use. What I always try to do, if it possible, after I draw in lines like this, is to go out and make sure that what is, um, what my lines, my stone walls say are stone walls are actually stone walls. I got really excited um, on a piece of property once, actually the with where the Whitney cellar hole was, um, when I saw what I thought was another wall structure that I hadn't actually seen on the ground, I went back and it was a big, 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 big old pine tree that had fallen. And so LIDAR picked up the big pine tree. It's not perfect, but it's good. So, what I'm hoping people will decide to do is to help us to photo map uh, stone walls um, on your property. And you could use a GPS if, if you have one of those, or you can use, um, most cell phones have in their, their photography, when you take a picture, it records the GPS coordinates. And if you go into the properties on a PC or info on a Mac, um, you will see those coordinates. The good news is that with that information within the GIS program, I can basically just import all of those, all of those photographs and they appear as dots on a map. Um, actually, I'm going to jump down a minute if I can do this. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so this is, this is Don and Sarah's stone wall. So when Sarah was taking pictures, um, I asked her to take a picture at one end of the stone wall and the other end. Now, these pictures here are the beauty shots. These are ones where you go close up right at the very end and get right over the stone wall and take a picture. We're not seeing that, Eva. Right. What aren't you seeing? The picture. We only have the document. It's a document mapping your stone walls. Documents up right now. Well, that's weird. Huh. I advanced it on this screen, but it's not. Not on yeah. ours. Okay, that was weird. Were you seeing? Um, you had shown it to us earlier, uh, the before and after of the Robinsons wall. 
No, okay. Yeah, but that, that was the, the clearing of it, but- she, Yeah, it, oh, okay. okay, hang on a minute. Let me try this again. Um, there you go. Okay. Now we're seeing it. Okay, okay. Let me just, okay. All right, so, so, as I, so here's the, the beauty shot in the bottom right hand corner. Mm -hmm. And so what Sarah also did was she went to each end of the stone wall that Don had cleared and took photographs right above the end of the wall. And with those photographs that she sent to me, I can just import them into ArcGIS and they show up as dots on the map. When I click on them, I get this window and it is um, a hyperlink. When I click on that, I can get to the picture. And so it's a very nice way of getting people to help map the stone walls. Mm -hmm. What I then did, let's see if I can get this, okay. So what I then do is draw lines. Here's the LIDAR on the right. Oh, I guess that's the left, I'm dyslexic. So there's a LIDAR with the two, um, with the two dots. Down to the next one. Okay, wait a minute. How is that happening? Okay. Resume slideshow, resume slideshow. All right. What are you seeing now? Same thing as you were talking about earlier. Okay, this is strange. Um, there we go. Okay, so, so here are the two dots on the map. Are you seeing my cursor at all? Yes. Now we are. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, we weren't earlier. So these are the two dots on the map from the photographs that Sarah took. And here I've drawn in um, the stone wall. These other lines are stone walls that I've drawn from the LIDAR. And here's Don and Sarah's house. And I hope there's a stone wall back there because it sure looks like there is oh, on the uh, yeah. sure LIDAR. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, yeah, pretty much to the road. So, so the idea here is um, to hopefully get you folks to be willing to go out and photograph the ends of the stone walls. Let me go back to, if I can, to the mapping the stone walls. Okay. All right, are you seeing mapping your stone yeah. walls? Okay. So this is what I was talking about in terms of taking a photograph at each end. And I really encourage you to take beauty shots, even if you can't see the wall yet because you haven't cleared it yet. Um, and and so, so we get a before and after. Um, and I have set up um, an, an email account because I've, I've done this kind of thing with other, other groups before. And when they all come into my regular email, I get overwhelmed and then I can't, I have to go back and search and mm. it's a pain. So I've set up this leverett.mapping at gmail.com. Um, and so if you're willing um, to take the photographs, send them to me and then I'll put them on the map. And I will send you a copy of the map. Um, so this is the basic take a, it's straight wall, take a picture at both ends kind of thing. If you wanna get more complicated, um, okay. All right, are you seeing a different screen now with a photograph? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you've got stone walls that abut each other, um, then taking um, photographs at each junction 
is the way to indicate that. And if it's complicated and you're willing to do it, drawing a little sketch to give me a clue um, would be great. Sometimes, um, as I said before, I think the, the LIDAR will help guide me. And in some places there's LIDAR, I mean, there's, there, there are stone walls and the LIDAR doesn't pick it up. Um, so if you have a curvy stone wall, like, like the one in this picture, um, when with the old roads, like Old Cave Hill Road, for instance, is a windy curvy road and there's a stone wall that, that borders the edge of the road. They're pretty common. Stone walls like the one in this picture are much more unusual. They're just sort of in the middle of the woods or in, the, in fields and they curve and there's no real clear understanding of why it's like that. So, um, so those, are really, those are really interesting to me. Um, if you, um, if you want to go further and take notes about what kind of a wall it is, that would be super. Um, so is it a double wide stone wall? Is it a huge wide stone wall like the one I showed you before? That one, by the way, the, the, the really wide one was five feet wide at its width, which is mm. how tall I am. Um, so that's the idea. And, um, and so we are hoping that you all will get out your clippers and weed whackers and, and start clearing stone walls and start photographing them. Um, so does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? Yeah, you'll have to unmute yourself, I think, if you do that. Uh, uh, Susan, you're, you're, you're unmuted. Yes, I, I wonder about, um, I have a stone wall all along Dickinson, you know, that starts way down in the center of North Leverett and actually goes, because this was the old road up here, all the way past the Shinners and then me all the way down to me and, and on beyond. And it's very, um, Isaiah says all the stones are there, but there are a lot of big trees mm -hmm. you know, that have pushed the stones away in, and buried them and whatnot. That's a different thing than clippers and weed whackers. It is. It is indeed. And, and the, the picture that I showed at the beginning where you could barely see the stone wall is a little bit like that. It doesn't have as many trees that have pushed things away, but it is really thick in there. And it does take a little bit more than a half hour with a weed whacker. Um, I'm wondering if there are things that, you know, one would need to know, uh, if one were to try to do this themselves and not, you know, hire Andrew or somebody who knows what they're doing about roots and stuff. I mean, it w this would mean more than just taking down the tree actually, right? Well, taking down trees, of course, is, is something that as a landowner, you know, you may or may not choose to do. Um, but um, the first thing I would say is, is, is to watch out for poison ivy. Um, for those of you who are susceptible for, to poison ivy, ivy um, because the roots, um, as you probably know, the roots are as dangerous to you as the leaves themselves. And you might not see them in the fall. Um, and they're just as toxic. Um, the, I have um, clippers that have um, kind of like gears that take out some really big um, um, trees and roots. Um, I would highly recommend those. Um, and, you know, invite your friends. It's a great COVID, act COVID activity. You can, you can uh, space out along the road and, um, I have in, in the, the, 
mapping work where we were walking um, power lines and gas lines, there was a team of usually five of us and we could clear, totally clear um, a section of stone wall um, in a fairly reasonable amount of time. Um, you know, three or four hours if you get a bunch of people and everybody, you know, somebody's cutting, somebody's hauling away. Um, it, uh, if you get some of your best friends, then it goes easier. Mm -hmm. Eva, I wonder if we want to make that, put this out as a, a community project, you know? Yeah. On, uh, on Lever Connects or whatever, and just have dates and times where you're going to be clearing a portion of stone wall and yeah that's a great idea kind of like our leverett trails committee yeah. for trails mm -hmm. um i'm i'm amazed at how many people show up at those events and not all of them are even from town there um so that that would be a great idea um, um that's interesting yeah. Eva, because when you showed uh the map of our stone wall um, opposite and the opposite side of the road, there's a, a stone wall there, but it, it's not depicted. Um, so it's covered over. Um, yeah, so you see that that's a stone wall right on the other side. You can see it. On, oh, here, yes. There, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, I I have I've been working on on the stone wall map and I I just haven't um drawn all of the ones that I can draw from LIDAR. Okay. Um Leverett's a big town. Right. Yeah, <laughs> um right. you know the 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 fun ones are um are ones where you're not expecting them. Right. And right. there are a bunch of walls. There's some walls um on the Cave Hill conservation area for instance where um there are walls that start and stop and go nowhere and just sort of are out there in the middle of the well, world. Because that's the old poor farm, right? So did you is. use those for, uh, you know, animals and... But yes, and there are some that are, um, are seem like they were fences that, that held something in. There are other ones that are just... 300 or so feet long and they start and they stop and they don't fence in anything. Mm -hmm. And so then you get to be really crazy like me and saying, why did somebody do that? What, <laughs> what function does that serve? Um, and, the rocks out, I guess. <laughs> and, and that may be it. Um, they're in across from the library um, in one of the old houses, there is a short stone wall um, that, um, you know, starts and stops and goes nowhere. But at least it's in somebody's front yard. These ones that are in the middle of the woods make you wonder. Right. Um, there, was, there was a law um, at one time, um, it was pretty much throughout the colony, that you had to improve your land. And one of the ways that improving it um, consisted of is building a wall. So maybe that's what some of them are for. I, I don't really know. Um, it's one of the things that makes me have fun in the woods when I find things. I, think I, I have a question. Uh, do you have any sense of if there are stone walls in the woods in Brushy Mountain? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because my I have about ten, a little over ten acres that goes up into Brushy Mountain, and I wondered if I should uh, see if I could find any stone walls. Well, I would be happy to talk with you about your part of Brushy Mountain. Okay. Um, the it's not that large of a part of it. Well, I yeah. So so. Um, Coles Lumber Company, which owns Brushy Mountain, has a public use policy. And that dictates what they want you to do or not do on, on their land. 
And so they're not real keen about people taking photographs or drawing maps um, or doing anything up on their land. So I did not include any of Brushy, um, but anybody who's been there knows that there are old sewn walls and there are old cellar holes up there and it is a rich history of Leverett. I w please, please um, um, be, if you're going to photograph um, stone walls that belong to someone else, please get their permission yes, first. Yes, yes. But I'd certainly be allowed to photograph on my own property. <laughs> oh, of course. Absolutely. Okay. You can do whatever you want on your own property. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think Barbara has a really good idea and it doesn't take us to initiate anything. You can initiate, if you want to do a project of clearing a stone wall, you know, perfectly on your own or else permission <clears throat> from the owner, just put it out there um, when you're ready to do it. And, we could have lots of groups working on it. We're not going to be around after the 10th to clear any walls, but until then, I'm really ready. <laughs> I, I think that this is one of the, I think Sarah's idea here is to try to get people energized moving up to our 250th um, so that, you know, it sounds like 2024 is a long way away, but we know it really isn't. And it would be a beautiful thing to have um, the walls along the roads visible. Um, and some of it like, like Dawn's uh, um, ferns will come back every year, but the really heavy rooted things um, you can stave off for, for a while. <clears throat> but someone mentioned that maybe we should have a Guinness World Record or something in Leverett and <laughs> Actually, I was thinking maybe that's not such a bad idea. Maybe we could have a Guinness World Record of having the most stone walls of any town. And um, maybe <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> that um, would be fun. Maybe we could keep it to the roadside. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I think that the the way to go really is to to talk with the landholders sure, sure. and. Right and say, hey, we've got this, you know, if, if we can get a group of people in town who want to be the road clearers and um, like the trails committee, but for roads and stone walls, that would be a wonderful thing. So it's, it's kind of that sort of impetus of making people aware of it. You know, Sarah's onto this stuff, so she's got me a little bit <laughs> involved. Now, but, now he points out stone walls to yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you mm -hmm. remember when we were walking up in our property uh, woodlot, and we just, you find a stone wall in the middle of the woods, and you say to yourself, "Where did this come from?" I mean, it, mm -hmm. the size of the stones—I don't know how they even moved them. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not little little pebbles. I mean, they're they're huge. So yeah. you know, there's a lot of history of really the history of ever. So someone is tied into our stone walls, and like mm -hmm. you say, to be um, in advance of the celebration of the anniversary of the, of the community, it'd be great to get these cleared as much as possible. So, so Eva, um, I guess, I don't know if folks have uh, questions about the, the procedure. Could you just go over that once more as to uh, the, yeah. steps, the steps to take in mapping stone walls? Sure. So the basic procedure is that you go to one end of the stone wall and you take a close-up view with your cell phone. Um, and, and at this point, most cell phones take GPS-enabled camera uh, photographs. If you don't know whether yours does or not, and you want to just take a picture and send it to me, um, I can, And or if, if you don't know how to get into the properties, um, then let me know. One of the things you don't want to do when you're sending these photographs, though, is you don't want to reduce the size. A lot of times people do that um, just because it doesn't clog up the email so much, but it um, often takes the, um, the GPS coordinates out of the metadata, so you don't want to do that. So you go to one end of the stone wall, take a photograph, back up, take a beauty shot, Go to the other end of the stone wall, take a close up, back off, take a beauty shot. Um, and if you're, if you've got um, 
junctions in your stone walls, um, taking a picture over the center and then backing up again and, and try to, to get pictures um, that will um, represent what it is. It, um, in some cases, the, the other thing that I wanted to say about GPS on cameras is, on any GPS, is that um, the longer you stand in the place where you're taking the photograph, the better accuracy. Um, GPS, as you all know, are, satellite, are done from satellites flying around in the sky. And so their accuracy differs from moment to, to moment. And so the longer you stand in one place, the better your accuracy is going to be. Mm. And in mm. sometimes um, with GPS photographs, I will get um, the people send me, I'll get two or three that look perfect and, and are on the property that I know they're supposed to be on. Sometimes they end up being a half a mile away. And then I just throw out that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it, uh, it takes some playing afterwards. And what I will do is um, make a, a map of the walls that you've sent me. Um, and uh, then you can say, yeah, you got that right. No, you didn't get that right. Um, I think we're done. Certainly appreciate uh, all your hard work, Eva, putting this together. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, thank you. It's fun. And, okay. And, and, I, and I really think this will make, I, I think people are, especially now in, in the spring, because, you know, we're all going to still be right. sort of quarantining will be a great way to just get people yes. out right. and, and doing stuff. Yeah, it'll be a great spring project. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, thank, okay. you thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Don and Sarah and Eva.